Matt Lenehan Boxing Social in association with Forge Irish Stout Empire Fight Store. Delighted to be joined by Eddie Hearn here in Manchester. Eddie, how are we? I'm fantastically well, thank you. Um, back from Vegas, um, Manchester this weekend, New York next week for Haney Garcia, Liverpool for next gen, Canelo Munguia, can't claim it, but on the zone. Uh, Mexico the week after that, Fury Usyk. The week after that, we got schedule. yeah, we got um, on the zone as well. We got um, Cordina fighting Kakachi there, and Jai Opatia fighting Bradis. Twenty fifth, Taylor Cattrall straight after that, and then straight into Bivol Betabiev in a five v five, which drops on Monday at the Presser. The best card, top to bottom, yep. I've ever seen. Even better than some of these we saw back end in Saudi yep. when what? Yep, because every fight on the June first card is a pure fifty fifty. I mean, you, because you will favour one fighter, you could say it's a 60 40. But yeah. every fight is a complete pick and fight. I can't wait for Monday. But look, let's talk about what dropped yesterday. I think it was yesterday. I'm losing track of time with how long we were yesterday. But Jerron Ennis, yeah. pound for pound, one of the best in the sport. I feel like his talent doesn't have the resume that matches it. But I'm sure that's your job now to yeah. make sure he gets these big fights. A uh, landmark moment for you guys in terms of a signing. Yeah, and he texted me last night to say, well, we broke the internet. And I. I knew it would be big. There's a lot to be said about a surprise announcement. You know so many announcements now just leak, don't they? Yeah. Like Coppinger messaged me last night. He's gone, oh, I thought you might want to have leaked that. I'm like, no, because the power of it was, wow. And, you know, he, he, he messaged me to say we broke the internet. And I think he was even surprised. I was a little bit by just the, the magnitude of the response because I've never had so many messages from industry people going, wow what a signing because we all know how good he is and there's no one that doesn't think he's a pound for pound talent all right i think he's the best welterweight in the world now we've got to go and prove it we've got to keep him active and we've got to build off this momentum and this excitement that people are starting to think wow we're going to actually get to see how great boots is Realistically, over the next 12 months, he's been out of the ring a year, so obviously no one would him of just getting back in the ring. Well, but in terms of names... He mandatory. He has a mandatory against Cody Crawley. The, you know, he, ha he has to fight his mandatory next. Um, that's one of the problems with being out so long. Um, whether Crawley takes the fight, we'll see. But we want him to really ideally headline in June, first week of July, whatever, in Philadelphia. Bring him home to his city and get momentum. Fight, obviously, again this year has to fight three times in 12 months. Every fighter at that level should be. Who are the names that you would need to see him in with? Obviously, with Crawford bouncing up, everyone talking about that as a dream fight. fight. You know, I think I'd, I'd love him to fight Crawford, and Crawford's one of my favourite fighters. But Crawford against Boots, fucking probably the best fight in boxing. But Crawford won't fight Boots yet because the reward's not there. People like Bomac, people like Terence, they know how good Boots is. They, I'm sure they think they beat him. Yeah. But they're also going, fuck fighting boots unless I'm getting millions and millions of dollars. So it's our job to make that fight as big as possible. But the good thing, really, is that there's going to be champions available. Stanionis, um, Barros, who are gettable. Because you just got to pay them the money and they'll be there. So first things first, get the defence. Mm -hmm. Either have a big name at the back end of the year or try and unify the division. And we must get boots undisputed within 18 months. It's a big, it's a big uh, goal, but achievable with his talent if the fights come off. Look, let's go on to what happened yesterday. Um, you're calling out however many ducks in a row. Mm. I think um, looking at Ben Shalom's story, he sort of put hands in the air to say oh, that wasn't directed at us because it was a Hennessy and Isaac Chamberlain decision and um, Silver Spoon Baby, I think, is what you were labelled on Twitter. I mean, what, what, go on. <laughs> well, no, I thought, you know, that was a bit, bit of a, bit of a, hissy fit dig from Isaac Chamberlain. You're happy about that, does it bother you that? What, Silver Spoon Baby? Yeah. I mean, it's true, isn't it? I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. My old man was from Dagenham. He made a nice few quid. I was born. I had a nice life. We were doing well. And then I took it to a whole nother fucking level. I mean, what else am I supposed to do? But it's a bit weird to sort of use it as a, I don't know, like... An insult. A, yeah, an insult. I mean, I don't know what else I was supposed to do. Play the hands you dealt. Um, so Isaac, I don't know whether he's got a chip on his shoulder or he's, you know, a 
offended by me. He ducked Chev Clark. He shit himself. That's what he'd done. And that's fine. But everybody on his team knows he can't beat Chev Clark. No problem. All I'm bothered about is, and I never mentioned Ben Shalom's name, by the way. I think people just said it's another duck in a row, and the previous ones where you've referred to ducks have been in relation to, obviously, the Azim situation. Uh, every Because every fight... By the way, Ben Shalom's involved in Isaac Chamberlain. He's done his last, what, six fights? And guess what? His next fight will be in, with him as well. So don't think that they're not talking. But I just said it's another fight where a fighter's ducked against our fighter. I don't know why people are getting so touchy. It's not as if four have already done it from Boxer, is it? Um, so, I, I, I don't know how many times I've got to say this. If you don't have the talent to compete against our team, right, or you can't beat our fighters, it's no problem. Just don't fuck us around for two months and then pull out on the day of the purse bid. Uh, Mick said, you know, we, 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 we put a courtesy call into you an hour and 30 minutes before the purse bid. Thank you very much after our team had driven to Cardiff. To, to make the bid. You responded to that, I believe, saying you could have got someone local to deliver the bid or something like that. What, fucking Brandon Scott? <laughs> I mean, no, he also said to send it in the post. No, I'm OK, thank you. I'm not putting a bid or my fighter's career in the hands of Royal Mail or some geezer in Cardiff. I'm sending my own person, my own representative that I trust, to hand deliver the bid. By the way, if Isaac Chamberlain knew how much I was bidding yesterday, he would throw up all over his floor. But, as I said, clueless, because all he'll do is listen to people. Why not see what the bid is? Well, like, why would you? Oh, because I really want to fight Sislag. Oh yeah, fuck me. They're queuing up to watch that one. Isaac Chamberlain against Sislag. Whoa, what an absolute knock out the box office not why don't you just allow the bids to open and see the fucking life changing amount of money you were about to receive for that fight and consider it because they thought that, that he was told to pull out the bid we've got a great idea we're going to do this instead no you're doing it for your own benefit let the fighter see the value of the fight yeah and that's the frustrating thing so I don't care about Isaac Chamberlain. I don't care about Adam Azim. I care about my fighters. That fight got ordered two months ago. Chev Clark was supposed to fight in March or April. This has stopped him from fighting. Now I've got to go and make a British title fight and get him on a card ASAP. So forget about trying to be smart with me. Just don't disrespect our fighters and it's not fair on them. If you don't want to fight, get out of the fucking way. Simple as that. And the fact is, Chev Clark would have destroyed Isaac Chamberlain. And if they want to run it at any time, instead of some poxy fight against Sislak that fucking no one gives a shit about, let me know. Well, look, moving away from that, something a bit positive. Um, Rumours on Kay Taylor's next fight. I've seen everything from Vegas here, the Sphere, first fight of the Sphere. Um, what can you tell us? When are we going to see Katie back out? What's yeah, the plan? I think that Serrano is the right option right now for Katie Taylor. We are in discussions with MVP. There's no fight done, there's no fight signed. Sphere, I mean, I don't know where that's come from. I saw it online, I think Benson, probably Benson. Yeah, yeah. Um, great story. Not a lot of truth to it, really, to be honest with you. Love to do it, who knows? But at the moment, just trying to make the fight. So we'll see. I think the front runner for Katie is Serrano, but as I said, it's not done. Last one, let's just talk about this card um, from top to bottom. I and mean, every time I ask someone about this main event, no one can pin it down. There's no one de telling me definitely Jordan Gill yeah. wins this. Zelfa Barra, um, just talk to me a little bit about this card. It's a good fight, yeah, fight yeah, night here in Manchester. Look, I think first things when the, when the main broadcast starts, Gomez against Kane Baker are going to give you a horrible all-out war. Um, nine, yeah, possibly. and Rhiannon Dixon against Carabajal is a great fight. I think it's a 50-50 fight. Ellie Scottney unifying as well for the world title. The main event's the kind of fight that we should be making all the time. Like two guys, Brits, who want to fight for the world title. They're both at world level. Let's see. Um, you're right what you say. No one can, hand on heart, really pick a winner. And that's when you've got a great 50-50 fight. So tune in on Saturday night um, and a real brilliant domestic pick and fight on the main event. Eddie Earn, appreciate your time. Cheers.